What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a demo that the developers sent on over for a title called Lords of Ravage. This game has itself built as kind of like the opposite of Darkest Dungeon. Uh, this is a game where you are the bad guys and your goal is to take over the planet and kill all the good guys. So you know all those pretty elves and all of those dashing bearded dwarves holding tankards of ale and whatnot? Uh, you're the bad guy in the skull-themed armor that's going to be crushing all their skulls. That's pretty much the way that it goes. Uh, this is, as far as I can tell, a game by the developers of Mainframe Defenders, which was actually a very tight, very polished strategy game that if you never got around to playing that one, I highly recommend it. Mainframe Defenders is a really, really good game. And so this one immediately caught my notice. We're going to be checking the game out today for about 25 or 30 minutes. I'll be doing my best to give you my first impressions and things I noticed that the game is doing right or wrong as we play, so that hopefully those things can either be corrected or accentuated. The link for this is down below. The demo should be out on the day that this video goes live. And then on top of that, you can also look down below for my Discord and my Twitch stream links, just in case you wanted to hang out live any given day of the week. So, let's dive on into Lords of Ravage. For the sake of disclosure, I have played the tutorial, but other than that, this is mostly blind. So there may be some little cuts and edits here as I look at stats and things of that nature, but hopefully the whole thing works out. Uh, so let's see here. We are playing as a faction known as the Dread Knights right now. It doesn't look like the other factions are available inside of this demo. However, we can read them to figure out what else they're planning on doing. This game kind of has a different structure than Darkest Dungeon. So imagine, like, you know how you send your adventurers into darkest, into the Darkest Dungeon and they fight and stuff? Imagine, if you will, that those guys had a boss who could be summoned whenever you want, who is basically, like, a big bad version of all of them, kind of with, like, a... Ex like, sort of like a... like a... Marvel versus Capcom tap-out system where your party jumps out and your leader jumps in. And he's, like, way more rad than everybody else, but, like, if he dies, that's it. That's what this game kind of has going on, and so that's why the leader and the faction are kind of relevant. For right now, we have the Dread Knights, which are exactly these sort of Arthas-themed kind of guys that you would expect. But there's also Zavaris, which is apparently a sorceress, and it looks like she's going to have some kind of, like, magical faction. And then over here, there's Asnea, who is a demon general. So anyways, that's kind of cool. Uh, we'll go ahead and play the game on normal. We'll take Barold, and let's get Barolin. My faithful warriors and brothers in arms. In my visions, I saw the glory of the First Empire. Its unmatched power. Its unprecedented wealth. In the center of everything was one artifact on which the strength of the Empire relied. The Staff of Archidon. Only legends about it have survived until this day. However, it is much more than a mere legend. Once its power is in our hands, we will achieve true greatness, and today we begin our conquest. Huzzah! 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 Say the little pixel guys. So as you can see, this game has very, very fetching pixel art. It uses a style that personally for me is probably one of my favorite art styles, which is 2D sprites overlaid on the top of like, uh, you know, 3D backgrounds. I've always felt like that's a very, very good looking style. I've always liked it a lot. I try to bring it up as much as I possibly can whenever a video uses that kind of PlayStation style because I think it's rad. I think it's great. In fact, I think the closest thing you could kind of compare this game to when it comes to the visual styling is sort of like a a grimdark Valkyrie profile is actually kind of what it reminds me of. So, at the beginning of the game, we have our troops. We need to take these troops and we need to deploy them. So it looks like we have a Dark Priest, which is an elite. That means that this guy is going to use up multiple troop slots and he tends to be a lot better than the baseline units. If you're wondering what our party cap is, it's right here over on the right. We can have four guys, basically. Uh, it looks like we were in combat for maybe three rounds from the looks of it. Uh, th there can be multi-stage fights in this game, so a big portion of this game is basically managing your troops and figuring out what you can afford to lose versus when you'd want to, like, break out the big guns effectively. Uh, but anyways, we'll put a Dread Knight out on the field. That sounds good. 
I think I'll probably... What's a fanatic do? He's part of the Dark Alliance, applies one stack of resilience to an ally, and deals 100% damage to a random enemy. This unit also has an extra life, but he's only got 45 HP, which means he's going to go down pretty fast. We've got a Spell Sword over here. Figure we can probably put in the Spell Sword. It looks like he's got a ranged attack, and he's also got a melee attack. Alright, well, like, I want to have a full frontline group of tanks, but I don't know if it's a good idea. We'll put in, like, some kind of weird priest to... Oh, he's a ranged character. Okay, well, let's put him in the back then. We'll drop him over there. I do like the little summoning ring that you get right there when you put down your guys. Maybe we'll have two of these guys out in the front, and that has effectively used up pretty much my entire unit cap. Uh, do I need to worry about him blocking for this guy? I don't rightfully know. Now, the first thing that I noticed about this game when I was playing through the tutorial is that the health bars are in really unfortunate places. Uh, they have a tendency based on the camera angle to sort of overlap one another, which is bad. You want everybody's health bar to be visible, but the game's already got a fairly busy UI. So let's start the combat, and we'll kind of see where they could afford to put some of this stuff. Now, we've got the first turn. We can click on anybody. Anybody can take their turn in any order, and no doubt you've noticed the little tarot cards at the top of the screen. This game has kind of god game elements to it, where you've got like a deck of abilities that your leader has, and you get these points every single turn, and you can basically trade these points in for buffs and like abilities that you can play on your characters. Uh, so we can get a stack of focus to each ally. The game is tooltipped very well. If you hold down the control key on any card or any unit or any ability, it will tell you exactly what all of the spell effects and all that kind of stuff do. So that's a check in a box right there. But anyways, back to what I was saying, the health bars tend to overlie one another. I can't help but feel like maybe it would look a little bit better if all of the enemy's health bars were like down here, and when you moused over them, it highlighted the one that you were looking at, along with all of their tooltips and everything else, and your guys were all listed down here, and maybe you just got rid of the health bars above their heads altogether. I don't know, I'm not a game developer, but what I can tell you is that the health bars overlapping one another and being blocked by certain camera angles is the sort of like UI gore that's gonna need to be fiddled with a little bit just for presentational style purposes. Uh, so these guys are right here, they have two abilities. Everything you need to know about the character, they've got HP, they've got AP down here. These guys unfortunately only have one AP, but it looks like we can put resilience on ourselves. What does resilience do? So it reduces all incoming damage by 25%. That's probably a good idea because what you'll find in this game is that the enemy tends to have like much more rad stuff than you do. Like, so your guys are mooks. Their guys are actual heroes that are trying to stop you. And so anyways, uh, don't be alarmed if you lose characters. It's one of those things that's going to happen. We're going to focus up our fire on this guy right here. And as you can see, the game is fairly well animated. I think the animations look pretty good. Uh, we'll also go over to this guy right here. And what does he do? So he's got obliteration. Deals 20% damage to an enemy. The damage dealt is increased by 50% of that enemy's power. Okay, so it would be increased by like 10 because I think the sword up above his little health bar is his power. All right, and then he's also got Stack of Decay on the enemy. Decay is what, like a dot? It stacks independently and sticks for three turns. Okay. Yeah, that actually did a lot of damage. That did considerably more damage than I expected it to. Unfortunately, it's gone on cooldown, so there's not much we can do there. Uh, we can deal damage to an enemy equal to 50% of that enemy's power, so we can deal 20 damage to this guy using a card if we had a few more points. We could put two stacks of focus on an ally. I think that just, like, raises your damage, yeah, by 25%. And then we could also put focus on all of our allies. But since we've already played our turn and there's not really anything else for us to do, one turn of that would be kind of wasted. So we'll go ahead and wait. All right, so they hit me for 45 damage right there, and then also nuke healed themselves for quite a considerable amount. Feels bad. Uh, let's go ahead and get on the attack, I guess. However, we do know that this guy is the healer right here, so we definitely know who we have to focus on. Let's go ahead and put them out. We'll keep that going. Uh, we've got this guy ready to rock. We'll go ahead and put some decay on him. Oh, it puts decay on everybody. Nice. Well, that's good to know. I don't think it's going to help altogether that much because it doesn't do that much damage. But, like, what does that do? Your leader deals 25% damage to a random enemy five times. Yeah. 
do that. That sounds great. We need to kind of stack up as much damage as we conceivably can for right now, because I get the feeling they're going to just mangle their way through our lines. Yeah, our hero is already dead in the back line, so there's not much I can do about that. Uh, let's go ahead and we will drag in... Oh, I don't know, maybe a spell sword or two? Yeah, let's drag in a couple of spell swords and we'll see how that goes. But I'm pretty sure that's all the reinforcement points that I have, unfortunately. So I can't drag anybody else into combat here. We'll go ahead and start it off and hopefully we can kind of like bear this thing out and make it happen. You may evacuate your followers and summon your leader during your turn. It feels like a decent idea. Back away, I will deal with them myself. Yeah, let's do it, dude. Let's get the leader in here. Let's bring the man. There he is. Look at the size of that axe right there. You can almost hear the boss music playing. All right, so what can I do? I can do 50 I can do 50 damage right there and put a stack of horrific wounds on them. It deals 25% damage, so 12 damage at the start of a turn. We can do 50 damage and then 25 damage to everybody else. I feel like that's probably a good idea. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, that was definitely what I wanted to do right there. We'll end our turn since we don't have any more AP. A little bit of damage out right there. However, you can basically pull out your hero whenever you want as far as I know. Like, you can have this guy bail out. And then he'll sit up here and he'll slowly regenerate his health back. So he's kind of like a limited resource that you sort of want to squirrel away and be careful about. Ah, uh, we'll leave him in for another turn or two. I'd like for him to, like, whack one guy if we can. He is getting hit pretty hard right now, though, which is unfortunate. We'll get some horrific wounds on that guy, and yeah, the horrific wounds are going to be ticking. They're not going to feel too good. Let's... Oh, he's still got an AP left. Oh, nice, dude. Hell yeah. Apparently, horrific wounds didn't harm me that much. We'll hit him right there so that the bleed gets him. Oh, he didn't die. Oh, no. That didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. I thought for sure that he was going to die on his turn. All right. Well, let's drop these guys real fast. There we go. They have now been struck. And then I kind of feel like we should drag some dudes back in. That's kind of what I feel like. But maybe I have to have AP to do that. Oh, he's entered phase two. That's what's happened. So your characters have a phase. This little wheel right here fills up the longer that you're in combat. And basically, it'll give you buffs and debuffs. And it's it's basically to represent either like berserker characters or it's to represent characters getting tired and fatigued. And it kind of depends what unit you're playing, which way that's going to go. But usually what happens is after a couple of turns, you'll get some kind of buff, which is like more AP. And you'll get some kind of debuff, which is like you lose attack power which you can see right there. I think I would like to smite this fool with my extra AP. That sounds good. Oh, we're in phase three now. We're going to hit for 50. Uh, can I drag these guys back in when I want to? I don't know. Let's finish this guy off. Bow. There we go. We have been victorious. We have cleared our first fight for the Great Dark Overlord. We lost a character in there. That's kind of a bummer. Wish I had not lost my priest, but that's the way she goes sometimes. Now, this game has a structure to it. Now, basically, you have a map right here. The map is very pretty. It's drawn in 3D, once again with a 2D texture over the top of it, thus maintaining the theme of the game, which I think really ties the whole thing together aesthetically. You want to see the same level of care and detail in the combat that you're going to see in the interim period where you're playing the game, and I think the game has accomplished that perfectly fine. Uh, what I would like to see here, though, is we've got to pick where we want to go, and there will be various rewards depending on where we want to go. Uh, so, for example, some of these tiles will give us more units. As I said, these guys are mooks. They are meant to die. Nobody cares if they die. However, you can upgrade them uh, from your troop screen, as I recall. Yeah, management over here. Although we do have a typo right there. They'll definitely want to get that sorted out. But anyways, this menu right here, if you have the resources to upgrade guys, 
you'll see a little plus right here and you can click on it and you can upgrade that class and make them better in some way so like let's say that we go in on this guy we can take a look at his upgrades he can get like some new abilities some new passives but it's either going to cost books or it's going to cost coins in order to do that and unfortunately right now we lack the books to really make that happen uh, for our spell swords, we could reduce all incoming damage by 35%. I do think that that's a really magnificent thing to maybe go for. It looks like we can also get Repose, uh, which adds 4 EP, which are the points that we use in order to play our cards in combat. So when these guys die, they actually stock our coffers with resources that we can use uh, to play special abilities, which makes them actually a really fantastic sacrificial unit, which then explains why they have so, so little HP and they get one-shotted in like one turn. You're supposed to basically be burning these guys like, uh, like fossil fuels in order to get further on into combat. So that's cool. The downside is, with Lord Berald, uh, we're going to have to, like, not summon him for a couple of fights because he pretty much put that one up on his shoulders in order to preserve our army. So, it kind of is what it is. Uh, I'm going to take the Spell Swords, and I do think that I am going to take the 35% the damage reducer. Sounds like a really, really good idea. Uh, it feels like something that would be helpful as we're playing these guys. And as you will see, they get a little plus mark next to their class designator over here. Uh, let's go back to missions. I think we should probably get after, ooh, 69? Well, for the funny, funny memes, we kind of have to go after this one. One of the guards sold us information about a relatively undefended caravan route in exchange for a share of the profit. Our troops will easily overwhelm the defenders, but we must act before the local government reinforces the route. Good. Let's do it. Uh, so as we've done that, we actually just got the money right there. I would like to see, so that's a little bit jarring right there. I know this is just a demo, but I'm, I'm putting feedback out there so that they can think about the way that they want to develop this. But when you click on that, it shouldn't just go away and add the money up here. You should do something immersive. Like, it should zoom in, basically, on the map, on the spot where that happened. Like, a little 3D model of, like, a carriage comes by, and a wheel falls off, and you hear, like, a whir of, like, horses, and then it bursts into flames. Then a window pops up and is, like gold and then it goes ticky 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 and the gold kind of goes from like you know the carriage up into the the gold ticker up here that's the kind of stuff right there that sort of adds to the feeling of a game like the tactile nature of a game that makes it feel better now i'm pretty sure let's see here massive zenith pack forces are about to enter this location we only have one turn to complete the mission i think this means these missions are about to go away and we do get that Shadow Volley card was really good, so I kind of want that. We'll take it. Uh, we're going to have a fight in a couple of turns. What do we have here? A Cult Evangelist. Oh, she looks kind of cool. I oh, and some Ritualists? Yeah, those guys got Dark Wizard vibes, dude. I would love to have Dark Wizards. I'm going to take the HP, though, to my leader real fast. And then we will take... What does that do? Adds 2 AP to a follower, but deals 50 damage to it. Okay. I'll take some more mooks. A group of outcasts have taken the ruins nearby, spreading terror among the travelers. If we act quickly, we may be able to win them over to our side before they are hunted down. Okay. I'll take that. And then we've got a couple of black guards over here. Those guys, That sounds pretty rad. I kind of want that, but we're going to have to take a combat after this. So do I want books? I think I, I think I want these guys right here. They seem pretty cool. They've got horned hats, and I like the idea of horned hats. Okay, so now it has added some tiles to the table. Actually, I think the, the word tiles right there just kind of triggered a feedback thought. Like when the missions spawn right here, it'd be really cool if they were tokens that fell from the top of the screen and like jingle jangled and then rolled into position like a coin almost uh, when they landed on the board. And the same thing for these little missions over here too. Maybe inject a little bit of life and motion to what is otherwise kind of a very, very static display with things, I guess, sort of hermetically popping in, popping out, disappearing and reappearing. Either that or like a cigarette burn basically, where like this part smolders and sort of forms the circle and then goes foom, foom, foom when these spawn with little flames going up. Something like that might actually be kind of cool. And then when they expire, they kind of convert into ashes and like, <sighs> like blow away on like a breeze. There's definitely a lot of improvements here, I think, that could make this map much more satisfying than it actually is right now. And I do hope that those things get implemented. I'm not a super creative guy, so that's just like the first thing up the top of my head. I'm sure the creatives responsible for the game can do a much better job. But we can take a combat mission right here. 
It looks like we get an Imperial Armory location if we go to that one. This one right here will give us an item of power, the barrier, and also some forbidden knowledge. Or wait, no. This one will tell us a chapel location. That one will tell us... Apparently it's an archive that gives us a clarity edict. Okay. Sounds good. Can I manage my edict deck? I don't know if those things are, like, single purpose. We do have a castle right now. I think that, like, we control... And it looks like we can actually do upgrades to these towers as well, although I don't know if that mechanic is actually fully implemented yet either. Yeah, it looks like our edicts are not single use, so we're actually building this deck right here in our image and what we want it to be like. I actually kind of like that. Okay. I wasn't sure if we had used up that previous card. Let's take a fight. I mean, we have a fight right here, and it looks like it gives us the location of a... So our bonus is followers gain 6 power until the end of turn. So on our first turn, we get 6 extra damage. It looks like we also get a potential upgrade, a Rancor. So if our follower is non-elite, the leader applies Rot to a random enemy. Okay, and Rot is, I think, a damage over time effect. And then Afflicted Personnel looks like maybe it goes on our castle or something like that. Uh, follower deals damage if they're a non-elite. It puts Decay on the enemy and a de it depletes a charge. Okay, yeah, let's take a fight. Why not? So it looks like this time around we've got some kind of, uh... Ah, Kingslayer, I feel like I should be surprised to see you. You really thought you could just walk out of this place? Oh, actually, this fight doesn't look as tough as the last one. These guys are considerably weaker. I think if we can just punch through their frontline melee guys, we'll probably be all right. Uh, we get to deploy six guys in total, or six points worth of reinforcement. I think I'm going to suggest a spell sword. I think I'm going to put in a black guard. And it looks like the black guard only counts as one unit, so we can put in a dread knight right there. And we can potentially put in... Let's put in the Ritualist, because it looks like the Ritualist can generate a lot of EP for us. And I, I would like to work on my EP. We've got... Dude, you attacked me. How are you going to say we've got company? You attacked me. All right. So what do I have to play with here? We've got Shadow Barrage. That sounds pretty cool. Do I have any buffs or anything I can play? Uh, so deals 50% damage to each enemy and adds an EP. And then if he had two of the APs, it looks like he could do 20 damage and applies a stack of curse. What does curse do? Deals three damage every time they take attack damage. That's actually pretty good. Uh, let's get our EPs going, though. Pretty cool spell effects. I like the way that those look. Uh, with you, yeah throw some damage around and just kind of see what happens. For you, it looks like we can put exhaust on a single target, so it'll decrease their damage dealt by 25%. I do suggest that we do that. I probably shouldn't be spreading my damage around like this. Basically, I, I feel like he's the one that's going to hit hard. And so I wanted to stop that from happening. Adds 20 armor and puts two stacks of resilience on yourself. Yeah, go ahead and do that, just in case. We'll start working on that guy in the front, too. It does seem like maybe the frame rate is locked. Is that lock something we can get rid of? Uh, it looks like the combat is actually on minimum speed right now, so we can turn that up, and there's a number of options here, really kind of bare bones at the moment, but the option to skip a game intro, show combat dialogues, uh, we can say how long combat dialogue lingers, combat speed right there. Uh, the image quality was actually on medium by default, and so I bumped it up to max, and in fact, it does look quite a bit prettier right now. It does look better, in my opinion. All right, uh, is that our entire turn? I believe I have used everyone's resources. Okay, so that gave everybody a little bit of a damage buff. Oh, wow, dude, he hit way harder than I expected him to. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit problematic. Uh, we do have enough right here, though, to deal some damage around like so. And I would like to continue spreading that damage around. Just make sure that we've got lots of EPs coming on in. We can put focus on an ally. 
And he's got two AP at the moment. So I would like to focus him. And we need to focus on getting this guy down right here, I think. He hit for 45 on his turn, so it was pretty stingy. Uh, we've got Ruination. Okay. Random damage four times. Yeah, let's go for the 12 damage just focused on this guy. Hopefully they don't have any heals or anything. That's going to really suck if they do. We'll see if these guys last another turn. Uh, no would be the answer to that question. Our man got bulldozed. Let's go ahead and we will drop in a... Are the Fanatics free? They still cost one, even though they die. I was hoping the Fanatics, because they have such low HP, would be free. And you could play them as much as you want in order to generate more EPs. But I don't think that they are. Okay. Throw in another Black Guard right there. Can I take these guys out to relieve them? It doesn't look like I can. Okay, so once they're in, they're in. And you can't pull them out wounded. Gotcha. Deal some damage right there with the Decay. Let's put Exhaust on this guy. And then we'll hit you again because you're going to die on this turn anyways. So, like, who really cares what happens to you? All right, down goes the enemy. Yeah, these health bars are really getting in the way of some of the animations and whatnot that you could see. I definitely think the, the health bars should be moved around somewhere. I'm not smart enough to say where they should go because Gestalt UI design is not something that I'm educated on. But the health bars are blocking animations. They're blocking each other depending on your angles that you're playing the game at. Definitely need to be moved around somewhere, I think. That's my feedback. Give me another EP right there. Causes all status effects on an enemy to tick twice. If we had four, I could run that ability again. This guy's got 30 attack power, and he's got 30 attack power. We could do, like, 15 damage to these guys, but I think I'd rather wait till next turn and then use that guy right there. Oh, they called in reinforcements, too. That's really quite unfortunate. I only have one reinforcement point left. I guess put a Dread Knight out. Uh, we'll have to call in our leader pretty soon if uh, this doesn't work out a little bit faster. I wasn't expecting them to reinforce, unfortunately. All right, throw that out there. Damage who you can damage. We will make ourselves resilient. Oh, we can't get to the back line until we take out this guy. Unfortunate. All right. Not in love with that situation, but it kind of is what it is. Wow, dude, we're just getting buried here. We're just getting absolutely melted. Okay, so maybe from now on I focus on the leader unit and try to take them out first. I do have three points right there. Guess we'll put 20 damage on him just to supplement because we're going to have to bulldoze him on the leader's turn pretty soon. Things are not going well right now. We're getting starched. I was going to say, is it going to automatically pull in my leader? I feel like it should automatically pull in my leader. Oh, I see how it goes. So if you lose, you get another round and it refreshes all your reinforcement points. Okay. That's not quite as bad. I think I can live with that. We've got a bunch of spell swords, so I'm kind of going to put spell swords in. I've only got one tank left, which is brutal. I'll put a Fnatic out front. But I think we're going to have to pull in our leader pretty soon. Uh, it looks like he's got... Applies a stack of resilience to an ally. Okay. 
what is the the resilience lowers damage by 25 percent all right put that on him and we'll just stab that guy we've got our abilities back we'll put another stack of resilience on we're gonna focus on this dude because i think he is the principal threat you guys drop damage wherever you can wherever whenever i don't know there, there's nothing really that rhymes with that right there your good guy throats will sever. There we go. I knew I could figure out something that I could throw into the theme of the song. Nobody has any status effects. Let's go ahead and put focus on pretty much everybody because we don't really have anything else to play with with regards to our stats. We'll go ahead and put another stack of resilience on somebody just to protect them. And I think we'll call in the big gun maybe after this turn. Can he enter combat now? He's not going to be able to kill anybody, though. Let's go one more turn. Yeah, okay. So buffs are pretty powerful in this game. Like, they want you to play those buffs. I kind of see how the lay of the land is happening. All right. Let's go ahead and get ourselves into some trouble. Go ahead and give him some more resilience, please. We'll keep all of our attacks going out to right there. He's got Decay on him now. Good. Get that right there. I at least want the frontline guy to be one-shottable. There we go. Okay, he's now down, but we are out of stuff to play. Um, I'm not going to reinforce from here, I don't think. We're kind of... I, I know I can place more units. It's just I'm I'm out of them. These heroes, we gotta we gotta work on some kind of like keto training regiment or something for my units. Like we've really gotta step our game up here. The forces of evil are not looking great. Like the forces of evil are really putting up a very very poor show right now. Part of that is my fault. I'll freely admit that maybe I'm doing it wrong. But that having been said, uh, let's go ahead and. Nobody else is in the same rank, so we're just going to bury this guy first. There we go. Hopefully we don't take too much damage here. Oh, he's got like a shield. That's pretty cool. All right, cleave these guys down. How much is that going to do? 60 damage to a single enemy and 30 to the other one? All right, cool. There goes another one right there. Hopefully they don't get to reinforce again. If they get to reinforce again, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry myself to sleep. There we go. We're victorious. Cool. Well, I thought we were going to die after that first round, so everything after that was just like a big old beefy bonus. It uh, looks like everybody got some XP, so that's good. Our classes kind of leveled up and became more elite. It looks like that added 20 HP to the Blackguard, and it added some damage to him as well. So that's nice. Uh, until our next combat, though, I think we're going to have to focus... I want to see, did that get added? It did. Very cool. Oh, and that's upgradable as well, so you can make it even better. Nice. Well, okay, so the combats actually, so the combats are deadly and, like, you lose guys. But that having been said, the combats also give you pretty, pretty rad bonuses, if I do say so myself. Uh, I'm going to need some more units, so we'll take that mission right there. Night Archers. I need frontline guys. I don't know if you want to line up the frontline guys for me, but frontline guys sound great. I'm going to take 23 book right there. Ooh, there we go. There's two frontline guys. I'll take that. We've got one more pick that we can take until bad things happen. Is my deck back to normal now? Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure those weren't getting burnt off of me, basically. Um... And I think the longer you fight, the bigger the king's shield gets before you send him in. And so, like, you're kind of balancing risk versus reward. But after playing this for about 35 minutes here, I think it's promising. I think the art direction is phenomenal. I think it looks great. The sprites are absolutely beautiful. And I think everything presentationally looks fantastic. There are other battle maps that you can fight on. They were in the tutorial. I don't know if they're actually in the main game as of right now. 
uh, but there's like grassy fields, there's like overgrown ruins. Like in the tutorial, I fought on a bunch of different battlefields, and my only thought about that was that they used like an orange Breaking Bad filter on everything that I think they could ease up on the saturation of a little bit to make the units pop a little bit harder because they are so beautiful to look at. Uh, but other than that, it looks like we've got combats that we've got to handle. What happens if you leave these combats up and you just don't deal with them? Because to me, it obviously looks like that's an option. I guess we're at the end of the video, so we can just, like, find out. Okay. So it looks like we've got a, from my observation, we have a meter that's filling up up here that is how much we have basically conquered the region and taken over it. When it gets up to full, I think we have no choice but to take a boss fight. So my guess is it offers you combat missions every five picks. You can skip them at will, which I actually like. That gives the player agency, but by not taking combat to conserve your troops, you are missing out on potential XP, upgrades to your castle that make you stronger by providing universal passives that make everybody better, which are effectively kind of like relics from something like Slay the Spire. And so I, I like it. I like it a lot. I definitely think that these little icons, they're like placeholders. They should probably be cleaned up a little bit and brought into kind of the grim dark aesthetic of the rest of the game. And then there's the other stuff that I brought up over the duration of the video. But for right now, for a first pitch demo that they're introducing the game to the public, the game is not out yet. This is just like a demo that they're releasing on the day that this video goes live. I would say that it shows promise. There are definitely things I'd like to see adjusted, but the core idea shines through in my opinion. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Lords of Ravage. Tomorrow, we will have something else. Thank you for joining me and lending me the luxury of your time. I'll be back later. Farewell, everybody.